Welcome to another episode of Discern. I am Ross. This week we are unpacking some digital currency topics with my friend Kirby Anderson. Welcome back to the show, Kirby. Oh, it's good to be with you. Thank you. So we have covered Bitcoin, which a lot of people have heard of and hopefully maybe understand a little better. If you go back a few episodes, you can get a primer on Bitcoin. Then we talked about blockchain, which is an underlying technology that Bitcoin uses, but that has tons of use in other areas in society. And today we're hitting non-fungible token. Now, some people may go, say that again. What, what is that word you just said? It's often abbreviated NFT, I think, because it's hard to say. I first heard about this concept on sports radio and they were talking about digital baseball cards. And I thought, how can this even be a thing? I don't understand it. I'm starting to understand better how this plays into society. But let's just start with this, Kirby. What is a non-fungible token or NFT? First of all, the word fungible. Okay, that's a word we don't use every day, but fungible means that it's uh, exchangeable. And that is, I can have $2 bills and it doesn't matter whether they have this dollar bill or that dollar bill. So they're essentially the same. Or you could have gold coins. You know, it doesn't matter if one gold coin is different than the other because they all are worth the same amount. Non-fungible means that it's unique. That would be like having a ticket to the Dallas Mavericks or a ticket to the Super Super Bowl or something like that, where you have a specific seat uh, in which you're sitting. And so non-fungible tokens are a way in which you would have a certificate of ownership. Let's say you have a very valuable painting in your home. Well, how do you show that you own the painting? Because you have the painting in your home. What if the painting's so important that they decide to put it in out art galleries around the world and it circulates around? How do you show that you have ownership of that? Well, there's probably a certificate of ownership or there could be a non-fungible token that on the blockchain, which we talked about yesterday, demonstrates that you own that particular painting. Yeah, and I, I, you can correct me if I'm wrong. My thought would be, if I'm talking to my kids about this, I would use baseball cards, the physical cards, as an example. There was a time when these were extremely valuable because that's what people were willing to pay for them. And you can graph that, and that, and that was a curve. And that particular, you know, uh, asset that you could buy, it just it has decreased in value. Now there are still valuable baseball cards, but. On the whole, that particular set of assets is just not as valuable today as it was. And most likely, these NFTs are going to be that, where there's probably a spike and we might see a drop. Although with the metaverse coming, Kirby, we could be in for a different ride. We certainly could. One advantage, though, that we can talk about, though, is the fact that people are investing in these not only for fun because they have discretionary income, but they're also investing in a lot of things, appreciating assets, because as we talked about a few days ago, our dollars are devaluing. And so if you are trying to stay ahead of inflation, investing in gold or silver or the stocks that are actually high tech stocks or value stocks or growth stocks or real estate or some of these other issues like Bitcoin, those are things that people are investing in because they recognize that the value of their dollar is dropping. So they're trying to find things they can invest in that will at least maintain, if not exceed, the actual inflation rate that is affecting us every single day. That's right. And this has been a strategy for forever, too, <laughs> since, since the dawn of man, to diversify where possible. And so this is why people invest in real estate. This is why some people own gold. And these are those are resources that are scarce. And I do think one side observation is they're not making any more land, as my dad always said. The metaverse may, with the concept of blockchain, build its own land. And so if there is a centrally owned set of land, meaning not centrally owned, but uniquely created set of land in the metaverse, that could be an asset that's worth investing in. But again, don't invest in something you don't fully understand. This is the purpose of this show is education, asking the questions. I encourage our audience in all of these things, do the research, understand where you're putting, as you say, your scarce resources. You want to be a good steward. This has been very helpful to me in understanding the concepts, Kirby. Tomorrow, we're going to wrap up the week really talking about, okay, all this digital stuff. Is anyone overseeing it? Are there regulations? We've talked about decentralization. What does that mean? We're going to unpack that in the next episode. So we look forward to seeing everybody back for that next time on Discern.